Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you what is, in my opinion, the best way to mock your HTTP client calls in .NET. Now, the HTTP client is one of those problematic things for many people because it doesn't really follow the rules you'd expect it to follow. Even though it is pretty easy to find a way to mock it, there is no clear way to do it and we're going to see exactly what is problematic about it. But in this video, what I have for you is what I believe to be a very nice and elegant way to do it that respects the way that the HTTP client actually functions. If you like the of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapses.com. Now, before I show you the code, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Octopus Deploy. Octopus Deploy is an automated deployment and release management tool used by leading continuous delivery teams worldwide. It helps DevOps teams at over 25,000 companies accelerate reliable, repeatable, and traceable deployments across different cloud providers and on-premises infrastructures. With more than 500 different automation step templates and integrations with hundreds of technologies like Azure, AWS, GCP, Azure DevOps, and way, way more, connecting your processes together into one pipeline has never been easier. It's actually what I've personally been using for the past five years in my last two jobs, working with microservices in both major cloud providers to manage my deployments and build simple but also complex CD pipelines lines and I've been extremely happy with it. It was actually the only DevOps tool over the past five years that was never changed for a different tool because nobody had a problem with it. It does what it needs to do and it does it well and reliably. So if you want to get started with Octopus Deploy, check the link in the description and thanks again so much to Octopus Deploy for sponsoring the video. All right, let me show you what I have here. So I have this API here, a customer's API, which is effectively a CRUD REST API that can create customers, get customers, and so on and so forth. And one of the functionalities of this API is when you create or update a customer, the user provides your GitHub username, and we need to validate that this username actually exists on GitHub. And for that, we have this GitHub service class over here with this method is valid GitHub user. Pretty straightforward. Now, there's different things you might want to test here, but one of the things you want to test is that if my HTTP status is forbidden, which is when the API rate limits us, then I properly log this message and the appropriate HTTP request exception is thrown with the appropriate message too. So with that in mind, I'm going to go to my test project over here and I'm going to show you the test I have already for this method. So this method over here should check that an exception is thrown with the appropriate message when the API is throttling us and also that the log warning call is called with the appropriate message over here just to make sure that if we have some alerting and monitoring on top of the logs we don't break it when we change the log message. Now this is where you would log the HTTP client. However, we have two problems actually in this situation. First, our HTTP client isn't really coming from dependency injection. Instead, we're doing what we should be doing, which is injecting the IHTP client factory. And we have actually configured over here a client specific to GitHub with the appropriate uh, user agent header and accept and all that. And then we inject that, we get it by name over here. And then that creates the HTTP client over here, which is what we want to effectively mock. So we have two things. First, you can't mock it directly because you don't really inject it. You create it through the create client method, but this is easily fixable. We can mock this method and say this method returns the HTTP client. But then if we go to the source code of the HTTP client itself, as you can see, it's a partial class that extends the HTTP message invoker and that in return extends the I disposable. So you don't really have an interface to mock those calls. And if I go to the method we are using, which in our case, it's the get async method. If I go and find this get async method over here, you will see in this chain of calls that eventually it calls the send async method over here, which you can't obviously mock because it's a public method in a class and you cannot do that. You can't create the proxy. Um, but if I go into core, you will see that eventually all of those things, if I go into the invoker, which is what really is, uh, being called here, it's calling this send async method, which in return has a handler send async method. And that's really where you want to go because the HTTP client itself will actually use an HTTP message handler to run its requests through. And that, because it is abstract in an abstract class, you can easily mock that. Well, easily. 
we're gonna talk about why it's not that easy but at least now we know what we effectively have to mock uh, and just for the avoidance of any doubt just to understand what i mean by this http client use handler if you just create a client like this and i say var client if i go in the constructor you can see that it uses a new http client handler so it's effectively the same thing as me doing something like this new http client handler However, since the handler is what actually sends the requests, what you can do is pass any handler that you want. And because the client handler implements the message handler, which is a public abstract class, we can actually mock that or create our own implementation. If I close all these windows, what we can do is do the following. We can make a mock of the handler. So private read-only mock of the HTTP message handler. And I can say handler mock equals new mock and i'm using a mock over here and then i can get that mock over here and i can set up the http client factory mock which returns the client and say that set up the create client method when it's called with github as its string and say that this returns a new http client and we're passing down the handler mock now because we're providing a base address as well we would need to override that too so i would say base address and provide the github api link but that's how i would make the client factory return a client that returns a handler which is mockable here's the problem what you might try to do is say handler mock dot setup and what do you want to set up you want to set up obviously the send async method so send a why is that happening well it is happening because like i said before let's find that send async is protected and you can't actually call it now what you might be doing which in my opinion you shouldn't what the way you might be hacking your way around doing that is use mocks capability to access protected members by name so you can actually do protected over here which is a total hack by the way it's just reflection top of, of reflection expressions just to even make it work but whatever if at least that makes it testable for you that's fine and then you can say set up and we have to specify what we return because we're gonna go by name here and we're gonna use a lot of reflection behind the scenes so set up a task that returns an http response message which is what this type actually returns over here you can see this is basically where i'm getting this from and these are the parameters we need to provide so http request message and cancellation token and then we need to specify the name of the method by hand you would probably extract that to a constant but like i hate this and no you cannot use name of because you don't actually have access to that thing if i try and do name of http message handler dot send async you can't access it because it is protected uh, so send async then it expression because it would actually not work we need to go with the override that uses the expressions behind the scenes and then we want to do something like this where we say that it is an http request message that matches the request uri because we want to make sure we are calling it with the right uri you don't want that type of mocking to just check that any call would match it because then what's the point of mocking it in the first place and then for the cancellation token we don't really care we say any cancellation token and we need to make sure that this returns and like I said, this returns an HTTP response message. So I can say that var response equals new HTTP response message. And that's where we set up that. So the content would be a new string content. And what the API actually returns is this response over here. So I can pass it down. And then the status code is the forbidden one. So once we have all that in place, then we can pass it down over here. And of course, this is response async and now we have technically mocked the http client which is really the handler through the client factory and if i go ahead and i run this test over here then it works it passes i can actually debug it just to show you how uh, it works behind the scenes so let's go ahead and debug this unit test here we go so we did all the setup over here now we're going through every step so we're getting the client and this client like i said before actually i think we can get the type yeah you can see here in the handler if i zoom in as you can see the handler is this proxy that we made 
through protected with reflection that will return what we want it to return and it has this one interceptor which is what catches the call and returns what you'd expect to return and then that's how we're getting the response we're not actually calling anything but as you can see it's still a 402 forbidden with all the right responses we are getting the response body with the two different types you can see the json in raw form over here exactly as you would set it up and then the exception thrown and the method called and everything working now even though this technically works and it might be what you might be using i really don't like it it's very hacky it's very dirty you have to make methods around it to make it nice and then it's the i don't like this my absolute preferred and favorite way to do this is use a library called mock http and you know how it goes in this channel we do support open source so please if you think that what i'm going to show you in this video now is cool i'm going to have a link of mock http in the description please go and give it a start on github it really means a lot for the people who work on these packages All right so i'm going to go here and add this mock http package and it's this one by richard schley chalet yes i'm gonna add that and now what i can do is get rid of that mock handler i don't need it bye bye and i can have a private read only mock http handler instead and say handler mock over here and just create a new one and now what i need to do is first remove this object from here i no longer need that but I also no longer need all of this hack first to get it working. All I need to do is say, and let me just get rid of this. I don't like this. All I need to say is handler mock dot, and I have all these fluent extension methods to build my request the way I want it. So I can say when, and this can include an HTTP method as well, or just the URL. So for me, it's when something is calling a specific URL. In our case, the URL is this, then respond and then we have a few overloads here we can respond with a few different things you can have status codes enumerable key value pairs content like you, you have tons of overloads it's a very well thought out library so what i want to respond with is forbidden and then i want to have json content dot create to create the content and that's going to be just a new anonymous object in my case and it's going to look like this one so it's going to be message equals github rate limit message and i could also add the documentation url message which equals to whatever this thing is yeah over here let's just paste that and in my opinion this reads way way better it's way way more manageable i no longer need this response over here and if i go ahead and i run my unit tests then as you can see test is passing and if i go ahead and debug it just to prove that the response is actually coming through correctly hitting the breakpoint getting the response back as you can see 403 forbidden and you have the message exactly as you'd expect in my opinion this is a way better approach you have way more functionality here as well it is built for that type of thing you can have flashbacks auto flash there's so many cool features that you can actually see i just wanted you to see how you can replace it you can even create with a two http client a client out of the handler itself so it basically wraps it for you into way nicer developer experience mocking your http client through mock http so like i said highly recommend you give it a start on github it's a very nice package there might be others like it but that's the one i know and i've been using and i'm very very happy with it but what do you think are you using this are you using something else what are you using to mock the http client leave a comment down below well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making videos possible if you want to support me as well you're going to find the link in the description down below Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and hit the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.